Okay, let's talk some more about trauma bonds. What has start what creates these trauma bonds? What are some of the reasons these trauma bonds happen? Okay, the love bomb and the devalue cycle. So a narcissist or other toxic person with a personality disorder, usually in the beginning of relationships, is a different person. What we say is they wear a mask. They are love bombing you. They are grooming you and they are conditioning you to believe certain things about them are true. I've even heard of one who said to someone I know personally that they create the person they want the new person they're meeting to believe they are because the first impression is the one that sticks. So you see, some of them know it, some of them don't. But in any case, most narcissistic people have a love bombing period in the beginning of relationships that doesn't always look like gifts and fun times and lots of compliments and all of that. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it's the sweeping you off your feet thing. Other times it could just be that they seem like a normal person. Okay. In the beginning, this is why when you're in new relationships after being with a toxic person, or if you've never met one and you want to stay away from them, you got to get to know people a bit. You got to get to know all the sides of a person. Okay. And narcissists will have distinct sides. They aren't going to have this in between area that most of us have. They have this fake person that they want people to believe they are, which they present during the love bombing. And then they have the devaluing, which we're getting to next the devaluing side who is critical of everyone. And we'll talk about that in a second. So there's the love bombing. What the love bombing does is it creates the feeling of trust, right? It creates the bond in the beginning. It, it, it acts with the limerence you're already feeling when you meet a new person, if this is a romantic relationship that, that creates this feeling of, wow, this is my soulmate. This is the person I've been waiting for, so on and so forth. Okay, often, not always, but often. <laughs> and what happens after that, it doesn't matter if it's a month, a week, or years, the, the devaluation starts. Once a narcissist starts to devalue, the mask is off, they don't usually come back from it. They usually then stay in the cycle. It's not like they have one bout of devaluing and then they recover from it and they're back to being nice. That's not usually what happens. What usually happens is the devaluing starts. Once the devaluing starts, they no longer keep you up on that pedestal and they're letting you see their true face. They're letting you see the displeased, arrogant, unhappy, um, critical person that they really are. And they project onto you during the devaluing. They gaslight you during the devaluing. They may cheat on you. They may put you down. They may knock you off your pedestal in the sense of like no longer giving you gifts or being kind or all of that, you know. So the devaluing is literally what it sounds like, devaluing, taking away the value of who you, who they pretended you were or who they felt you were in the love bombing or whatever it is that's going on with them. And then they are taking that away and it's no longer there. Then the cycle starts. Then they love bomb for a few days and devalue for a few days or however long it is, right? The, it, the thing is, it's intermittent. It's, it's not consistent. It is, they start a little bit, they do a little bit of the love bombing, they do a bunch of the devaluing. They may love bomb you for an hour by text and then come home and completely stonewall you. They may be out to dinner and be life of the party and you get home and you get the silent treatment you don't know what you did so it's hot and cold flip-flop dr jekyll mr ms hyde going on all the time that creates total confusion and cognitive dissonance in your brain because you don't know what's what you start thinking it's you you start thinking that you're the problem or that there's a problem in the relationship or the person's going through something and they just need help. You start thinking all kinds of things, but the one thing you're not thinking is that's a narcissist. And that narcissist is not gonna change. Most of the time, that's not what we're thinking. We're trying to fix it. So while we're trying to fix it, our brains start reacting to it. We start having, so we're just gonna talk about this without, without all the science behind it right now. What happens is we get we start the chase. We start getting feeling addicted to this process because what we're looking for is some resolution that everything's okay in our relationship. We're looking for ourselves to feel like, like we're loved, like we're wanted, like we're cared about, right? And the devaluing, it becomes almost a challenge. It becomes 
so sad and so heartbreaking and then such relief and such joy in the moments when we get the love bombing. It makes us addicted to the pattern. It literally creates an addiction for this pattern. It creates an extreme need for validation and validation, not only that this person actually cares about us and loves us or evaluation, sorry, validation for our worth, validation for for pretty much everything in the relationship being what you think it is and then validation that this is actually happening so when you go to leave or when you're maybe in the state you're in right now you're going did this really happen is 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 what i'm seeing accurate is that is that is that normal for this type of relationship yes it is so and and that need for validation is really normal because it's part of this process so as we're in relationship with people, especially romantic relationships, but this can happen with friendships where there's hugs, where there's touch, where there's fun times together, oxytocin bonds, oxytocin is released, especially in romantic relationships. And if there is any physical intimacy that's going on, you are being flooded with oxytocin and it can be extreme it can make that physical intimacy and there's words i can't use here so there you know what i'm talking about <laughs> it can make that seem way better than it actually is all right because you get this huge rush of oxytocin because you've been so depleted and so pulled down in other ways all right all of this stuff that's going on makes it really hard to walk away. It makes it hard to leave. It makes it hard to stay away. And it makes us feel like we're the ones at fault in a relationship because it's super confusing. Most people who are trauma bonded have what is called cognitive dissonance going on. That is holding two states in your mind at the same time, yes and no, good and bad. It's holding two opposing beliefs at the same time. It is your mind trying to understand the duplicity of what is taking place. It's not going to be answered through the mind or through the emotions. It's answered through allowing that toxic person to be exactly who they are and seeing the truth of who they are. And by allowing, I don't mean letting them hurt you and letting them. I don't mean letting. I mean acceptance of their truth allowance of their truth in fact to the point where you're like yeah you are that and it's in seeing that that helps you recognize okay if i'm not if i'm seeing that this is what this person is and how they are and i'm also thinking oh but maybe it could be okay that might not be accurate i may need to listen to exactly what it is they're presenting me what are some signs of being trauma bonded holding on to the fantasy that they're not what they're actually presenting themselves as holding on to the fantasy that the good is possible, right? It's possible for a very limited amount of time, sure. But holding on to the fantasy that the good could be the reality, that the good parts could be what's real and could be what is always there. Another thing you might experience is justifying the behavior of the other person. You might say, yeah, but I did this, but I did that. If you, okay, here's the thing. Also, many of us have gone through this and we have tried everything. We have been the one to go to therapy. We have looked into every possibility that it could possibly be going on and then done our part. You might look up um, an avoidant person, how to have a relationship with an avoidant person. And you're doing everything you can on your part and it's still not working. It's still nothing's changing. All they're doing is taking more and more advantage of you because they're actually narcissistic. And then and then through all of that, trying to fix things, you're justifying the behavior. There's a sign that you are trauma bonded to the person, because if you weren't, you'd see this behavior clear as day and step away. Right. If, if, it, if you weren't trauma bonded. Another sign of trauma bonding is the constant thoughts of another person. You should be able to go through your day. And yes, your partner or your friend or your parent or whatever it is that in your life, whoever people you have in your life come up in your thoughts, you consider them maybe when you're taking a break or whatever, but you should be able to function without the nagging, insistent, persistent anxiety of worrying, wondering, and thinking about that other person. 
that's a sign that there's either codependency going on or trauma bonding going on or both, okay? Another sign of being trauma bonded is when you are apart, you have a desire to return to a toxic person. You have, you have a strong pull toward that person even though you know what they did. Low self-esteem can come into play here and feeling lost to self, feeling like you are no longer who you are. I had someone just yesterday saying, it just feels like a fog. I don't know. I don't feel like me. It doesn't feel right. I feel all wrong. And that was a great description of a horrible situation of feeling trauma bonded. So remember that love is not this. Love is something completely different. Okay, you may feel like you love this person. And in truth, you may in some ways love this person. But remember that this love that you're feeling is also mixed and blended and twisted and all smushed together with trauma bonding. If you have been with someone who is highly manipulative and how, who does these things that create these trauma bonds, right? So understand that, that what you will feel when you heal from this will be completely different. So even though it's like, yes, but I love them. Yes, but I love them understand that that if you want to get away and you want your life free of toxic people you have to see sometimes that what you may be experiencing of, of love in this moment may not actually be 100 percent love okay it's also mixed with this addictive process so what do you do when you're trauma bonded what do you do okay here's the thing that we have to offer we have one of the more comprehensive programs out there for helping people get through this stuff. And one of the pieces of that at Queen Being is our group coaching. If you need it, please join it, okay? It is as affordable as we could make it so that people can do it. There are meetings three times a week and I'm not here to like sell you anything. What I'm here to do is offer you this information so that you know there's a resource out there with someone who's experienced it, right? And who is you know trained and experienced in helping people through this trauma bonds can be hard to break alone what the group offers is not only hey you get to talk to me whatever you also get other people going through the same thing at the same time who are being vulnerable and sharing their experience in a setting that is safe and small and um protected from anyone else's ears okay so if you need it there it is that information for that is in the description of every video. I just want you to know it's available. So that is one way to help break these trauma bonds. Other ways is find a therapist or do private coaching one-on-one -on -one with someone, okay? That's obvious, don't need to say more. Another reason, another, sorry, another way to break these trauma bonds. Okay, you guys live in the moment, the moment right now. Be present to yourself, do things, get busy in your life, focus on you, your life, stay on your own track, stop looking back and stop looking at the other person's, the toxic person's anything, okay? Going no contact is really important if for a lot of people, for most people. If you can't and you're low contact, pretend you're no contact and only have contact about the things that are necessary and keep those brief and businesslike. Take days one step at a time take moment to moment make choices that are right now just make a choice right now maybe a different choice in 10 seconds that's okay just one foot in front of the other toward a goal of being free from these trauma bonds it is possible to break them people are doing it all the time any one of us over at queen being we've all done it so we know it's possible and we know you can do it too at times people forget self-care they forget they need to even take care of themselves. They don't even notice that they're not. So you can go to your basics, basic self-care, eating, sleeping, bathing, getting dressed, all of these things, our home, taking care of our home, these basic things that we're doing anyway, driving to work, whatever, do them with a little more care for yourself, whatever it is. If you're going to eat a meal, take three bites where you enjoy the taste of the meal. And if you're not into it, just say thanks for making the meal to yourself in your head, right? Like be appreciative of yourself take a shower if you in your shower put the temperature just right get the soaps you like get the smells you like take care of yourself and you may need to use that space to cry or you may need to decide that that's an off limits crying space and you use it to relax and you just take some deep breaths and you feel the hot water okay so use every moment in your life you can even do it brushing your teeth just 
everything you do in your life, add one little thing that is care for yourself. And it will help build a self care mindset that helps you through your day and gets you out of falling back into worrying about the other person. So a lot of people want to skip this step, but we got to feel all of it and grieve it and let it out. And sometimes talking about it helps. Sometimes journaling helps, whatever it is that works for you. Sometimes just taking a weekend in bed and just crying, whatever it is you need to do, do it as long as it's safe, sane and healthy for you. Okay. And know that these feelings will pass. You're not going to get stuck there. If you hold them back and try and avoid them and be like, I'm just taking this route and I'm just going to be positive and I'm just going to, they'll catch up with you. So let yourself feel it and process it. It's a lot to take in and it's a lot to, it's a lot to go through. And one thing I'm going to add here is try to be careful with too many timelines on yourself, especially in the beginning of healing from trauma bonds. It takes everyone the time it takes that individual person. Most people don't get over this in a weekend. All right. Most people it's months to get through this. And that's not to be scary or it's not like it's terrible and, and at its worst for months. It, it, it'll go like a roller coaster or like ebb and flow. So just take the time you need because there's so many things involved here that healing from toxic abuse and narcissism is a whole process. Okay. So just be patient and in, and appreciate the things that are better for you. So there's a whole list of other ways to heal from trauma bonds and narcissism and all of that. And we can talk about that in another time, but there's just start for getting through these first days, or if you're trapped in the cycle of the discard and Hoover, you know, this is, these are some tips for getting you from the feelings of trauma bonding to starting to take control of your own life and not having that other person control you from a distance because you're trauma bonded. Okay. I am Lise Colucci. I'm one of the life coaches at queenbeing.com and I'm here to help you if you need it. So check out the info in the description of every video. Let me know how you're doing. If you've gone through this, if you're experiencing trauma bonding, what is up for you and what do you need help with? So let me know in the comment section. Hit subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Take care.